computer. Okay, I'm recording. So, hey, it's Julie Nelson in Austin, Texas, and my good pal. <laughs> Valerie Crawl in Walnut Creek, California. Otherwise known as Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. So, Valerie and I have been uh, pals for some time, and, um, and we're both um, uh, really, I think, founding members of the RPN. So we're excited to, um, to be part of that. And we decided uh, instead of actually doing a class that we just wanted to do, we're gonna inter Valerie is actually gonna interview me, but I have proposed to her that we have a second taping, maybe in a couple months where I'm gonna interview her on her topic of choice. And, and I think I'm also gonna propose that when we do that, when I interview Valerie, that there's um, actually a, adult beverages involved so that one's gonna go off the rail whether there is or isn't <laughs> right exactly but today it's the middle of the afternoon we're uh, we're beverage we're beverage free so um okay so we're happy we're we're like kind of officially and unofficially starting this uh speaker series for uh rpn awesome so here we are so uh, so Valerie is actually technically going to interview me, but the reality is, is that we love to just kind of yak and chat about things business related. And so we're just going to kind of dive, dive into it. That's the plan. Yeah, yeah we're going to go off the rails probably today too, but in a different way. <laughs> Definitely in a different way. All right. So what's our, what's our plan? To, what's our plan today? And then we'll just get, get, get at it. Yeah, after it. Well, um, of course, we're going to talk about your book, uh, Success Faster, right which on. you have rewritten. Yeah, because um, that's what I talk about all the time. So here yeah, it is. So now it's six, Success Faster on Fire Hot. Hot. Um, Hot. And, and actually, I really like the rewrite a lot. I, I was going to tell you that. I, it's you. like, it's pretty much in your voice. It's easy to read because it's in your voice. Um, it doesn't get all wonky and technical and dry and boring, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, so all of that. And yeah, I owe you a review, whatever, whatever, whatever. Thank you. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. Yeah. So yeah, thanks. I, um, it was, you know, I wrote the first one uh, three, three years ago, which is success faster, quickly launch or relaunch a real estate career. Right. Um, but as just, over the last few years, as I was teaching a lot of that material, and um, I've realized that there, there was a lot more to say. Imagine that. I know that you have a lot to say. And I had, I had a lot more to say, and, and agents need help. There are a lot of agents out there that are just kind of stuck in the middle or stuck or, or can't find that sweet uh, momentum and stay there. I mean, most, yeah. most, I think most of us can, can relate to that. So that's um that's 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 what's behind uh really it's not really volume two but um it's the new really reiteration of just getting your business on track which means when you get your business on track you get your bank account on track which really means you get your life on track or to the next level and there's all sorts of sexy that goes on with that right it's amazing how many problems are solved by a couple of transactions back to back <laughs> yeah it, exactly exactly yeah. So, yeah so, so the top of our session is uh your fastest route to the next 10 clients and we're yeah. going to talk about your recently published your bestseller already um, yeah yeah it hit faster best on fire hot awesome. so um is that really one topic or two well it's interesting so the um uh uh Gaining, uh, gaining your next 10 clients quickly. I thought, well, I mean, we can talk about, you and I could talk about anything and we can talk about the book, but it's like, look, it's not about me and it's really not about the book. At the end of the day, it's about how can we best help agents and, and what it comes down to is lining up those next clients. If you have no clients, it's how do we line up the next three to five? If you have some clients, but maybe some inconsistency, it's how do we get consistent with that? Um, if maybe, you're, maybe, maybe your pipeline's okay, but you're really trying to get to that next level, it's like, wait a minute, how can 
how, how can we line up your next 10 clients as quickly as possible? And I do want to hit that really practically. I mean, give, give folks some real practical tips, but it's like, it's, it's, it's interesting. The topics are the same because in here it's like, no, let's, let's do our best to not overcomplicate this business. <laughs> right? oh, no, let's make it as complicated and as convoluted as we possibly can. Oh my God. Because oh. we can talk we could talk about everything and anything, but the reality is, is that at the end of the day, how's your pipeline? Right, because if you don't have somebody to sell a house to, you're not really a house seller. It doesn't matter your 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 marketing, your marketing, your new logo, your listing presentation, your your blog. Your headshot, my favorite. How's my headshot? Who no, cares? Right. You don't have any business. Right. <laughs> It's like, and, and that stuff, of course, that stuff's fun to deal with. We like that, but there's, um, and I think there's an entire chapter of this in the book, but, but when we're talking about your next 10 clients and moving your business forward, there's all the sexy stuff in your real estate business, and then there's the not so sexy stuff in your real estate business, and we have a tendency to lead with the sexy we have a tendency to just lead with everything else. And that's like that headshot and, and Ooh, I think I want a new logo or, you know, all of that. It's like, how's this font? <laughs> how's this font? Nobody's reading it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, and you know, it's like, I'm as guilty as the next person. Uh, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, seriously, like I do, like what's your favorite font right it's yeah. like no and we're not we're we're not going to go there it's like no how's the pipeline and how are you doing as a business professional um to stay on top of that and prioritize that and and make sure that that thing is anchoring every business day of yours when i uh it was about three years ago that i i relaunched my business because i had been um the director of training at um in a really big office right we're we'll, we'll be we'll be brand agnostic in in this conversation yeah um and uh and then i decided to leave the staff position and i and i relaunched my business right so after who knows how many years i've been in the business this is my 21st year how yeah. you've been well you've been i've been selling for 12 i've been in the industry for 45. yeah <laughs> Bruce. Um, but I, um, <laughs> when I relaunched my business, I literally had a sticky note. And so this is, so how to line up your next 10 clients quickly. So here's, if you will, here's practical action. Number one is I literally had a post-it note, like right on the edge of this monitor right here that said, Julie, what is your fastest route today to a lead client contract or paycheck do that thing first right we're kind of like do that thing first damn it right but it's like <laughs> this is the because i knew i i understood this that concept of julie nothing else matters but are you lining up your next few clients all the time right because if you're not, you're screwing around on a computer all day. You're playing you know? with fonts, you know, yeah. <laughs> you're designing a new that. logo. You're spending hours on an Instagram strategy class, you know, yeah. For and, what? yeah. And all of those things matter and they don't. Right. You got to do the dollar productive activities first. Yeah. And that's not, that's not the most interesting aspect of our business. It's not fun either. It's work. <laughs> it's work. So lining up your next 10 clients quickly is one, like really gut check yourself on, am I prioritizing the most important thing in my business? And am I consistent with that? You don't have to be perfect, but you, you've got, you have to build some consistency into that. Absolutely. 
you know, it's kind of like if you're, if your work week is, let's say it's a five day work week and Saturday's designed to, well, okay. So it's a six day work week, but let's talk five. Hopefully it's not a seven. Please take a day off. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, um, if it's a five day work week, I always kind of like to say to myself, Julie, you better have nailed that one activity four out of the five days on most weeks. Right. And I, and I know that if I do that, I'm, I'm actually doing a decent job of tending to my pipeline. Right. Perfect. Yeah. The, the perfect goal. It's like, no, have, have some grace around that, but you know, what, what do they say? Progress beats uh, perfection. So. Oh, absolutely. If, yeah. So if you're completely inconsistent with that, what would you say when I, when I say the topic, like line up your next 10 clients as quickly as possible, what comes to mind for you? Well, actually when you're saying it to me right now, what I'm thinking is, is because I took my foot off the gas thinking you know, as you know, I got double knee replacement coming in in my very, very, very near future. Soon, and I took my foot off the gas thinking that my surgery was going to be at the end of January because that's really where it should have been. I'm mm -hmm. shut down again. Uh, my surgery is probably pushed out till April, May. And my foot was off the gas. Um, mm -hmm. like, God. By, by design, your foot was off the gas by design. Right. But it, it's like, as we're talking today, um, and, and actually your book is sitting, you know, and I'm like, I need to read that again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need to go through that because I am at a different place where I expected to be right now. I expected to be receiving daily calls from Kaiser going, are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? And, you know, here's my phone. It's not ringing. <laughs> they should write a country song about that, you know? <laughs> and, uh, so I'm sitting here going, I could get 10 deals closed easily before Kaiser calls me. And, and it's like, I got to implement this myself right now uh, because yeah. my foot was off the gas. Yeah. But at least by design. To, and, right. that, and that's such a critical, it's like having your foot off the gas just because you weren't paying attention or you weren't being a good boss in your own business. Right. That's one thing. And most of us have been there. We've, Oh, guilty. We've made, yeah, <laughs> guilty. We've, we've all made that that mistake many times and hopefully we, we learn and, and get better. I have a theory with kind of your next, well, I have numerous theories, but, but I want to be really practical. So lining up your 10, next 10 as quickly as possible. And here's, I guess, concrete tip number two is this right here. Okay. Oh, that thing's scary. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Although um, I think so, if I turn mine around, it says 1220. <laughs> oh, right, right. Um, but here's the deal with this. It, it's like your next 10 clients are probably in your phone right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. someone you know or someone that they know. So they're all right here. And guess what? It doesn't really, and you could debate me on this if you want to, but... I'm not going to let anyone debate this on me. Okay, let's you go. Could, you could find them for free. You don't need a marketing budget. You don't no, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to argue with that because it's like I, I tell, you know, the new agents in my office all the time. It's, it, they're like, well, you know, I need this. You don't need nothing. You need to pick up the phone, call your friends, ask them who they know, who's yeah. looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. Yes. And there, there are a lot of ways, there are a lot of ways to do that, but we're going to do all the free stuff first. Right. And then do it again and then do it again. The reality, the reality for, a, is, is that most of us need very little marketing budget. Uh, I, can I con confession? Yeah. I have never spent any money on marketing. Yeah. It's like I spend I ne I'm now running a geographical farm, which I do have to pay for, you know, the nice design stuff that we pay for that we, okay. we hand deliver up until, you know, last year, yeah. but, um, cause we can't legally, but, um, you know, it's like, 
I don't pay for it. I pay for my client parties and I throw really elaborate client parties Yeah. and postage occasionally. Yeah. And the postage only goes to my sphere. Yeah. So for the most part, well, and because you have, you have a referral based business, I believe. Right. Right. As do I. Now there are agents that, well, and actually uh, statistically the majority of agents do. Yes. And so that's really what we're talking about. So there's some of our listeners may be in a different niche that, that, that really is dependent on a marketing budget. And I get that. But the reality is, is that, gosh, I think it's safe to say that 80% of the agents out there really have a, a very, very much a referral based uh, sphere and personal based business. Um, that they don't utilize. And that's why it's like, <laughs> it's all in here. Your next 10 clients are here for, for, I think I, I would argue that most anyone uh, listening right now, that that's, that that's where they are. So it's like your fastest route to your next 10 clients is to simply clear your schedule and let's say a minimum of two hours a day for the next two weeks. Julie, what am I going to talk to them about? I mean, I'm in California. We're completely locked down. We can't do anything except for essential real estate tasks right yeah. now. Well, and I think those that's that's interesting because those are, you know, I think you're into your next round of COVID care calls, unless you've been making those all along. Guilty. I am making, uh, well, I didn't make them while they were opening us back up. But now that we've had this lockdown and people are just like, and they're figuring out what it means. Um, I mean, yeah. you know, everybody ran around and got their last pedicure and their last haircut <laughs> for they don't know how long yeah. um, over the weekend. I mean, my gal worked from 7.30 to 9.30 both days. Wow. That's, yeah, that's interesting. So. Yeah. So that's kind of what's going on. So now I call and it's a little different because before we were the only ones that could go out. Nobody else could even go out um, without, you know, they hadn't opened. It's like everything. It was like done. Shut it down. Yeah. Um, and the calls I made once we could go out was, hey, Julie, it's Valerie Kroll. I was just calling, you know, I was thinking about you. I just wanted to let you know that um, real estate has been determined to be essential and I can get out and about. So if you need me to go grab something for you, I'm more than happy to do that. For you or your neighbor or your mom, who needs help? Yeah. Exactly. If it's there's anything I could do, just call me. I've got a lot of resources. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Those are great calls. And you Easy know, call. Yeah. And you're really not even bringing up business. Those are I'm great. not. But, you know, what happens when I make those calls is three to six weeks later, same person calls me back and they said, Hey, my brother wants to buy a house. We just saw the interest rates drop again. Let me yeah. help you brother. Yeah. And you can post, you can post some like real estate content during the time, but I think content that would be meaningful to those folks. Like it might be an article on what really is going on with real estate in your, yeah. in your area, you know? So they're seeing that and it's, and it's top of mind. Yeah. Now, Austin, um, so I'm in Austin, Texas. We're, here's one of the things, here's one of the dynamics that's happening in Austin right now is the majority of my buyers this year have been from your dear state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't had anybody go to Austin. I've had um, two to Idaho, three to Arizona. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, so listeners, your fastest route to your next 10 clients is you really have to think about the, um, the dynamics of your market and where are people moving from or to in your area? So in this case, uh, whoops, turn that off. Uh, in this case in Austin, um, one of the best things I can do to line up my next 10 clients is to talk to all of my California people. Right. Hey, I just, Hey, Valerie, I just wanted to check in. All of my buyers this year have been from California. So it's probably not a matter of if, but a matter of when you hear of someone moving here. So I just want to put that bug in your ear. Um, and 
and I'd love to be your go-to person. How are things going? Tell me about your, your, lock, your lockdown latest. That's that conversation. I'm shocked I haven't had anybody go to Austin because it's got to be next because, you know, I can see the trends to Austin too. We're, we're popping. We are, we are hopping. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the most aggressive uh, seller's market I've been in, in 21 years. In, in wow. Austin. Yeah. Wow. So, so, so in your area where, uh, where is the influx? Um, where, where's the influx? Or if there's, if, if there's more of an outflow, just get it out there and, and make sure people know that um, you, you will do the legwork to find a really good realtor for them in, in that other, uh, other area. About 25 to 30% of my business right now has a realtor referral attached to it. Yeah, that's about how I run too. And I'm okay with that because again, I'm not spending any money on marketing. Right. And those leads are like as near to a hundred percent conversion as you can get. Yeah. Those are, those are very high conversion. You, you know, you're, you're not, you're, you're typically not, you're not even interviewing for the gig. You're just being introduced to people who, who need you. Right. Exactly. So your next 10 clients as quickly as possible. I think, uh, really getting serious about your schedule and making sure that there's at least a couple hours every day carved out for that foundational task in your business. And you can run a squirrel farm the rest of the day, right? And I'm, I have a lot of experience with that, right? But I can't for two hours a day. Yeah. It's like, I'm not the most disciplined person in the world. I don't know about you. you well, you go to the gym all the time. I, I think that you're disciplined because I see that you're disciplined with your workout. But even like with that aspect of my business, I'm, I'm not the most disciplined person in the world, but I need to be four days a week. I'm really good with tending to my pipeline. Right. Oh, absolutely. It works. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, it, well, part of it is, I, it, it, and I went through this process myself with my coaches, you know, I'm a competitive power lifter. I hold something like, I don't know, 30 world records, American records, state records, all that good stuff. And I was like, why am I so good at that? And I can't pick up the freaking phone and call somebody that already knows me and likes me. And, and so I, I actually started approaching it the same way. Because, you know, the way I work out, you know, to do that, most people are spend an hour and a half in the gym. I don't have an hour and a half to hang out in the gym. I have about 45 minutes, maybe 50 on a good day. So I have to go in there, be extremely efficient, make the best of it. You know, I'm not busy talking to Joni, the aerobics instructor, you know. Um, I'm in there, I do what I got to do and I get out. And it's like, well, what would happen if I applied that to lead generate? Yeah. Well, and it's just work. That's it, just work. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's the same thing, right? Really? Yeah. It's the most important part of your work that, you know, I think our greatest joy is in helping our clients create uh, the right solution in their life and finding fabulous properties and, or selling and moving on. And, you know, and that's, that's a big deal. And that's, for most of us, that's why we do what we do. Oh yeah, somebody excited about their new house? There's nothing better than that. There's nothing better than that. No, I mean, it's, it's huge and it's like, it's a huge life change for them. And even if it's, you know, cause it's like, we deal with some sadness ones too. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just got through with, um, this gal's the only one left of all the brothers and sisters and all her in um, brother-in-laws, sisters-in-laws, she's the last one left. Mm. So um, we just got that closed and she was, it, she, it took us a little while to get going because she was so sad about it. But once it was done, you know, she was like, I'm really happy how everything turned out. And I'm glad I chose you. And what she doesn't know is I'm having a, a photo of the house painted for her. Oh, that's so cool. 
That's yeah. really awesome stuff. So think about this. So here's a, so fastest route to your next 10 clients. This is related to what you just said is take inventory of when you're working with a client. Cause sometimes we'll, I mean, we might work with them for six months, depending on the situation, right? You were talking to her for a long time before she was ready. It sounds like. Yeah, um, I started in January. We closed last week. Yeah. Oh, okay. So all year, right? <laughs> yeah. So, take inventory it's like how often and how purposeful are we asking for referrals during that entire time that we're working with them or do yeah. we feel like we have to like totally earn our way to ask that question later in the process that i struggle with that one and are we asking it right at the beginning so so for example just with a buyer consult if you have kind of a, a list of questions that you always want to make sure, or a seller, a buyer or a seller, and you have kind of your list of questions that drives you through that consultation. Now, a lot of us who have a lot of experience, we often, we don't have to look at that list anymore. Right. But you have your list. I will still print that list out and I'll have it in my, my folder. So let's say I'm going to my, my, my appointment to consult with my new client and I actually have my list of questions in the folder. I just don't have to look at them anymore. Right. But right towards the end of the appointment, I pull out my list and I'll say, give me just a second. Let me uh, review my list real quick. And I want to make sure I haven't forgotten anything that's important. Now one, they're like, Ooh, she has a system. So that yeah. looks good. But in literally, I can kind of glance at it. And it's usually these few questions kind of at the end of the list that I tend to forget to ask. Right. And one of those is simply, oh, hey, I forgot to ask you this. Hey, my business is all referral word of mouth. Is there anyone else you know who's talking real estate right now? that you could introduce me to. Yeah. And I've asked that on the initial one and then I'll listen to their answer. And then I even slightly joke a little bit with a little smile on my face. I'll say, I'm going to ask you this question every once in a while as we're working together. Right. Just cause that's the way my business works and you smile. They're like, okay, I get it. Great. So you've asked at the very beginning, and right. so what if you actually ask that question numerous times throughout the whole process? Do you think you, it would add more people to your pipeline? Would you think it would activate their reticular activator? It would activate their RAS for sure. So, you know, just, I mean, what I do a lot of times when I'll get them in contract uh, is I'll say, you know what, now that I've got you in contract, it's like, we're, you're moving to the next phase, Julie. I just wanted to let you know, I have immediate seating for one in my car. Who do you know? Oh, that's great. Say that yeah. again. That's a great line. Say it again. Now that I've got you in contract, I've got immediate seating for one. Who do you know that I could help? Oh, that's, that's, that's really great. Yeah. That's really and it's like, then the way I say it, you know, it's kind of a joke. It's kind of fun. But yeah. they're like, oh, yeah, you're not driving me around and you're out of work, you know. And yeah. I, sometimes I'll say it like that, too. You know, I, I'm out of work now that you're not in contract. I mean, I got other things to do, but, you know, I still got to go look at houses. Who do you yeah. want to see houses? You know? Well, and, and even having that list in my folder, it increases the likelihood that I don't forget to ask that question early on in the process. Because if I don't ask it then, it's like, oh, man. I didn't ask him that question. And honestly, it's one of the most important things I can do in my business. And I forgot to ask that question. It's like, yeah. Julie, really? So uh, again, your fastest route to your next 10 clients, it's closer than you think. You may just need just a few little steps in your system so that you confirm that up and, and increase the likelihood that you're actually remembering to ask that question. Oh, absolutely. And, and it, a lot of times it's like, you know, Julie, we're, you know, we're sitting here because, you know, 
whoever referred referred you to me gave you my information and that's how i do business so yeah. what i'd like to ask you to do there we go yeah and easy piece yeah with your, one of your other friends because what i find is not you know it's like your group of people is in a space where this is happening yeah yeah you know? to be to be purposeful with with that and recognize Absolutely. that we all have room when you look at these foundational piece, pieces of, of our lead generation efforts, we think, oh, wait a minute, I could be more purposeful with each of those. And you right. start adding that up and like your pipeline before versus your pipeline now, you start seeing more consistency, more maturity, more reliability. It's just, it's a healthier pipeline. And if you can manage that healthier pipeline, it absolutely will start showing up in your bank account. Oh, and when your bank account is healthy, it's really easy to just do the business and not be worried all the time. Yeah, the worry factor. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah, an inconsistent uh, pipeline is really stressful. It, oh, I think it kills people. Well, it can rob you of a lot of the joy of, of this business. Oh, absolutely. So we do ourselves and our families and, and our significant others, right? Or, or just ourselves, but we really do ourselves a big favor by investing in that. Um, one, of, one of my favorite lines, uh, and this was from a, gosh, a top, top, top coach in the country. <laughs> and he said, and now I say it all the time, but he said, your job is, and he, of course, he, he would say, stop overcomplicating this business. He right. said, your job, actually, your job description is this. Have conversations with people about real estate. That's Here. it. Yeah. So Absolutely. if you say, so there's, so there's a simple, if you want to kind of increase your accountability or increase your discipline, that could be the only thing that you track. It's like, how many real estate conversations did I have today? Not with an existing client, unless it was a purposeful lead gen conversation with them. Right. But it's like, no, did you have any quality conversations today with someone about real estate? And if the answer is no, you may as well have taken the day off. You didn't work that day. You did not work that day. Yeah. Now you, you may have run around and done a bunch of dumb stuff, but you didn't work. Well, you may have even been at your desk and your laptop all day, but, but stop. We need to stop fooling ourselves that we really truly worked that day and re redefine work. It's like, look, there's busy, there's everything and there's work. Work is, did I have any conversations with anyone today about real estate? That's the thing about this business. It's like nobody believes our own bullshit better than we do. <laughs> you know, it's like I buy what I'm selling all the time. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Okay, let's wrap this up because we really like to respect people's times. Okay. Time. And well, how uh, would you, um, let's go with this. How would you summarize um, getting 10 clients quickly? Okay. So let's see, and then and then it's your turn. Um, uh -oh. They're here, that's number one. Number two is two hours a day. Number three is um, asking more often and more purposely for referrals. Um, number four is um, uh, being, being disciplined with your schedule. And I like to say, line up the good days. So did I work today or not with that focus on um, a, a quality, it takes a quality conversation that day to be able to say, I worked today. Yeah. Okay. So how would you answer that question? Um, uh, getting 10 clients quickly, um, I would, well, for me, it, Oddly, whenever I give something back to the community, business shows up. So um, I would, um, first I'd get on the phone. 
just check in with people. And I mean, right now, especially because um, of what's going on out here, I would check in with people. That would be number one. Um, see how they're doing. Offer to bring them whatever they needed, help out in any way. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably um, take a second hit. I, I, I'd make sure I talked about an article that I'd read when I was talking to them. Hey, I saw this thing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I had something to send to them. So I had that second touch. Yeah. Um, and uh, rinse and repeat. Yeah. Just rinse and repeat yeah. until yeah. I had enough business that yeah. I could scale it down to. Because if I didn't have any business, you know, and then what do I lead generate for two hours and then watch reruns of what or i could rinse and repeat and call okay. more people if you have no business it's not two hours a day if you have no business it's it's six to eight hours on the phone today it's you you talk to every single person you possibly can Absolutely. and don't forget your closest people mom dad sister brother bffs uh yeah. former boss it's like no, your your closest people sometimes are um, are your greatest. Well, they they can be your greatest advocate too. And when oh, was absolutely. the last time you actually asked them uh, to help you, or are you just assuming that they know? Right, exactly. And y y you never know who they're referring to either. You know, it's like I closed two or three deals this year referred to me by a lender. I do business. With. Uh, yeah, lender, stager. It, it, yeah, exactly, yeah. those guys all, you know, they run into people that are looking to buy or sell houses. Contractors, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, and it's easier called. to have a business conversation with those folks because it, it can be all business, they get right. it. That's yeah. not, those, are, those aren't the personal, those aren't the personal calls. Um, so we're going to, so I wanna wrap it up with a couple things. One, of course, I always wanna pitch the book this is, I promise you, we, it really cuts through the bullshit and, and helps you uh, move your business forward. You can find it on Amazon. If you go to onfirehot.com, and I can't believe that URL was available, but it is. Wow. <laughs> on Fire Hot. Yeah, I had to make sure that it wasn't something racy. Onfirehot.com will take you direct to the Amazon page. And the other thing is that Valerie and I are going to do this again, maybe in a couple months, but where I'm going to interview her and um uh warning it may go off the chain um well you know if we wait a couple of months there's a good chance that i will have been through the surgery and i'll be on opiates oh let's do that <laughs> yeah that sounds fun okay very good i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna click on the end here so uh thanks rpn this was uh this good was really, everybody really fun we'll see you around